every, business as usual is going to be okay. Well, they, you know, in the past, when I've talked to people over there, they're almost proud of the fact that they have plenty of re, they have had plenty of reserves to operate. Almost like that's a it was a we saw ahead and we yeah, planned it. Yeah, this way. yeah, exactly. And it, it seems like they they said, well, there's no issue. We've still got two more years, and by then. You know the sun will be shining again. Um, that seems to me to be a pervasive attitude among some of the county bureaucrats. There, well, that's the attitude among two of the commissioners of the three majority. Uh, John hasn't said that quite as loudly because he hasn't been here as long. But Ray said has been saying that for years that we have this. Fortunately, we saw ahead far enough in the advance to set aside all these monies because bad times were coming. Well, nobody knew that. Nobody knew this kind of disaster was coming. No one in America uh, knew that we could anticipate that. So they're saying that today to justify the fact that we had reserves that, frankly, they told me at the time six years ago, Pete Wenton and other of our financial gurus that well, this is an appropriate reserve uh, based on the size of our county and our bond obligations and anticipated this and that. And then each year, as the reserves dwindled, they'd make the same speech. These are appropriate levels of reserves. Yeah. We, this is about the, where we should be. And now I'm being told that a year from now, that's an appropriate level of reserves as we've collapsed $100 million in reserves. Yeah. So what is appropriate? Yeah. I mean, I get very exasperated I'm sorry, to even, you feel me tensing up. It's my county. I love it. What do you feel in, in terms of percentages is a safe or, or, or appropriate um, level of reserves to have, if, if there is such a number for you? Well, there's in, it's in the eye of the beholder, just like beauty, Lewis, and my staff will give you a different number every year we go into budgets. So if... if I've tried to make this a learning process. To me, right now, where we've got 80 or 90 million, I wish we could level off right there and continue to have that. Uh, but in order to do that, I've got to do the salary things, and I've got to do some other things as well. And I'll, t I'll tell you this, and I, I don't mind being quoted on this. The fact is, our, uh, our tax rate today is lower than it was six years ago. If I increase the millage rate uh, even even halfway back to where it was, I would I would recapture some of the lost revenues and the average citizen would still be paying far less in taxes than they were in 04 because the value of their house collapsed so much. So I'm willing to do that. Uh, recognizing that's reality and that helps keep me off that cliff. And there's no reason I talk about that, but I'm not going to talk about in a vacuum of raising taxes unless we continue to do the responsible thing on further cuts that I believe are fully justified and other city agencies have had to do it. So I'm just not going to get trapped on a limb that says Frank Mann's in favor of tax increases. In fairness, in just the mathematics of it all, it makes sense to come back with a, a millage increase uh, where the people are still going to be paying far less than they used to. That needs to be part of the whole discussion, but I can't get the other half of the discussion going, so I'm not going to throw that out as... Uh, as Have you compared Lee to other counties of the same size of what they're doing in terms of the fiscal thing of what... Can, can not really, because there's always so many differences but to the extent I can, I've looked at a couple of them. I just write some of these. I was reading the paper. Uh, there's a lady, uh, uh, I kind of forget her name right now. I didn't know her, but uh, her husband is, is in the Florida Senate. And I knew him in my previous life. She is the uh, chairman of the county commission, or immediate past chairman of the county commission in, in uh, St. Pete. St. Pete taxes at a lower rate than we do and they spend, their total budget is lower than Lee County, and they're half again, as t uh, bigger than Lee County. So I know that other folks have done a better job than Lee County has uh, at, at protecting against uh, you know, the spending. Uh, 
We've done the spending cuts, but not near where we need to be. And I'm sorry I've been so uh, uh, preoccupied with spending, but that's what government is. That's the fundamental purpose of government, to come together and, and collectively uh, share our resources uh, for the benefit of the welfare of the whole. So, so much, as of my first opening comments, how do you talk about anything going on down there uh, without this? You want to talk about 2020? You want to talk about baseball? And where are we going? Those kind of things. It all relates to the dollars and the dollars that are available. And are you going to rob from 2020? I mean, what have you done if you've just taken those millages and then put them in to this meat grinder when you're not planning for the end there? So that's, not a, that's not a solution. That's a temporary diversion that robs from a very valuable program. And incidentally, since I brought it up, I am strongly supportive of 2020 as the only thing that's going to make Lee County different 50 years from now from a county which today is the same size I use uh, for Howard County, Fort Lauderdale area. They're a million four hundred thousand. We're planned to be uh, built out in about 50 years at a million four hundred thousand dollars. The difference between us and, and Fort Lauderdale is we're going to have green spaces and water recharge areas and parks and wildlife habitats because of the 2020 program and predecessors that the state did Frankly, when I was a member of the legislature and supported those kind of programs, uh, we will not be wall-to-wall -wall concrete. We will not be wall-to-wall -wall asphalt. We will have the natural assets that, that continue to attract people down here. I didn't make it up, but it is so true that a good environment does, in fact, equal a good economy, and the two must go together. A little diversion to get us off of. No, no, thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, we're, we're at the conclusion. Of what we've, uh, thank you so much for your time. Is there, are there any other thoughts that you have before we end? Now, Lewis, good to get to know you a little better. I'm, I've known your name for many years. Uh, you've contributed in many ways. Pam, I'm, you're kind of brand new. I've seen you, but I don't, I don't know you well. But thank you for your willingness to do this. You guys, I know you're struggling here. I know how you've shrunk. I've dealt with editors, very intimidating editors all, all around the room, and publishers too. Uh, this is still a vitally important role, particularly when you've got a congressional race like this with so many players, and then Brian's seat now with so many uh, players with this, this gloom and two picture crisis that Frank has described. Your job is critically important. I don't say that just trying to suck up to the press, uh, but I do genuinely care about this place I've called home all my life. <coughs> Your role is very important. My role is very important. I hope to keep playing it. Thank you very much.